In this video, we will give you an impression of infant lung function testing in practice. For this occasion, we will take you to the Institute of Child Health and Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children in London, where a specialised team of doctors and nurses have been working together for many years to measure infant lung function. Successful infant lung function tests depend not only on the equipment and skills of the operators, but on careful planning and preparation as well. Since tests should not be undertaken within three weeks of any respiratory tract infection, it's important to contact the family the day before any lung function tests to check whether the baby is well enough to attend. At the same time, any queries the parents may have regarding directions, transport arrangements and timing of the test can be explained. Tests should be timed to coincide with natural sleep if possible. The parents will be asked to try and keep the baby awake on the way to the hospital so that the baby settles as soon as possible after arrival. On the day of the lung function tests, it's important that two skilled trained staff are present and that the resuscitation equipment is checked. Minimum requirements include oxygen supply, an ambu bag, suction apparatus, pulse oximetry and an alarm system for contacting other members of staff. All equipment should be assembled, calibrated and checked prior to the infant's arrival. The pneumotech must be switched on to heat at least 30 minutes prior to calibration. Here you can see the pneumotech being assembled and placed within the transducer housing. The low dead space shutter is then clipped into place. A balloon shutter test is performed to ensure that occlusions can be held up to an airway pressure of at least 3 kilopascals. The patient icon must face towards the patient when in use. Room temperature should ideally be maintained between 21 and 25 degrees Celsius and the test performed in a room where the lighting can be dimmed and noise levels minimised. Details of ambient conditions are entered each day so that recorded signals can be corrected to BTPS conditions. The pneumotech is calibrated using a calibrated syringe to deliver a stroke volume of 100 millilitres over a range of flows. Measured volumes should be within 2% of those delivered. The plethysmograph is then closed and left for two to three minutes to reach thermal equilibrium before proceeding with calibration. The time constant indicates how long it takes for pressure changes within the box to decay and should be checked before each test. A short time constant indicates a leaky box with loss of box pressure signal leading to unreliable results. By contrast, if the time constant is too long, box pressure will be unstable and take a long time to equilibrate. The half-life should therefore be maintained between 7 and 11 seconds. Plethysmographic pressure changes are calibrated in terms of volume by using an automated pump to inject a known volume in and out of the box. On arrival at the laboratory, parents should be greeted and made to feel welcome. Despite the prior telephone call, parents should be questioned again regarding the well-being of their baby. This is important, since if the child is developing a cold or cough, they may not settle and results will be unreliable. In addition, it is essential to check that there is no evidence of noisy breathing or inability to sleep on the back, which could be indicative of some upper airway obstruction. Although the nature and purpose of the test will generally have been explained to the parents prior to attendance, these details should be repeated so that they understand what the equipment is for and how it will be used, before being asked to sign the consent form where appropriate. Soon after arrival in the laboratory, the child is undressed and weighed on calibrated scales. 
a physical examination, including oxygen saturation, is undertaken to check well-being. Babies are less likely to fall asleep if they are hungry, and it's not usually necessary for the child to be fasted prior to testing. The chloral syrup is given orally via syringe just prior to a light feed. Following sedation, the child is usually given a drink to settle and then allowed to fall asleep. The time taken to fall asleep following sedation can vary between 15 minutes and one and a half hours. During this period, the baby may become either slightly hyperactive or irritable. Once the child is sleeping quietly, they are gently moved to the infant lung function testing room and placed within the infant plethysmograph. Parents are welcome to stay with their child throughout the tests. A pulse oximeter sensor is attached to the baby's foot to monitor heart rate and oxygen levels throughout the entire testing procedure. During the breathing tests, the baby will breathe through a small face mask. This is gently sealed to the face using a ring of soft putty. The mask, which is attached to the pneumotac and shutter, is placed over the mouth and nose to record changes in flow and pressure at the airway opening. The mask must be placed carefully to avoid any obstruction of the nose and upper airway. The neck should therefore be extended slightly, with the operator making sure that there is no depression of the jaw when positioning the face mask. All signals are saved to computer, with tidal volume, which is usually about 8 to 10 milliliters per kilogram, being displayed at all times during the tests. Absence of leak around the mask can be checked by briefly occluding the apparatus and ensuring that there is no shift of end expiratory level on release. Once a leak-free seal has been established and the infant is in quiet sleep, measurements of lung function can proceed. By performing brief intermittent occlusions during tidal breathing, the resistance and compliance of the respiratory system can be measured using the single or double occlusion techniques. Before closing the plethysmograph, ensure the infant's arms and legs are safely tucked out of the way and that no bedding, tubing or wires get trapped beneath the seal. After closing the plethysmograph, two to three minutes are required for thermal equilibrium to be achieved. Once the box signal has stabilized, measurements can proceed. Lung volume at functional residual capacity is measured by performing brief intermittent airway occlusions while the infant breathes quietly within the plethysmograph. These measurements usually take about five minutes, after which the box is opened, so that forced expiratory maneuvers can be performed. Lung function tests in older children and adults usually involve taking a deep breath in and then breathing out as hard and fast as possible. We are, however, able to do the same test by wrapping a small jacket around the chest and abdomen which can be inflated at end inspiration to provide a gentle hug or squeeze, thereby forcing expiration. This encourages the infant to breathe out as fast as possible, flow and volume being recorded through the pneumotac. This rarely disturbs the infant, who continues to sleep peacefully throughout. This procedure is repeated several times, gradually increasing jacket pressure until no further increases in flows can be obtained, in order to measure maximum expiratory flow at FRC. These tests have been performed in thousands of babies at various centers around the world without any problems. We can obtain even more information from this test by inflating the lungs towards total lung capacity to obtain a full forced expiratory maneuver. This is done by inflating the lungs with a preset pressure of 3 kilopascals before inflating the jacket to force expiration. After the tests are finished, the jacket and face mask are gently removed. Infants usually sleep through all these measurements but begin to wake towards the end of the test or as soon as the face mask is removed. Measurements of body length using a calibrated steadiometer 
are usually undertaken at the end of the test, since this is better tolerated while the infant is still drowsy. After completion of the test, the infant can be changed and fed before returning home or to the ward. If returning home, parents should be given a phone number to contact staff in case they have any questions or concerns, together with details of the sedation used and any possible side effects. The child may be drowsy or unsteady on their feet for a few hours and therefore should not be left unattended. A phone call should be made the next day to check everything is all right. After the family have left, all equipment should be dismantled and cleaned thoroughly according to manufacturer's guidelines and hospital policy. Prior to final analysis and preparation of any reports, all results should be checked for adherence to quality control criteria before preparing any reports and backing up the data. Provided such measurements are performed carefully, assessment of lung function in infants and young children can provide important information about growth and development of the lung, early changes in the presence of lung disease and response to treatment. When used in conjunction with other critical information, they may thus contribute to a more scientific basis for the early detection and treatment of respiratory disease in young children. This is vital if we are to minimise lung damage and suffering not only in this age group, but throughout life.